morning everybody it's Tom Christie back in the carving shop welcome back to the YouTube channel and uh, if you're valuing the content please hit that subscribe button that really helps me out and the likes never hurt either but glad to be back carving it's a beautiful day in Nebraska it's a good day to be alive and in the carving shop and working on this green wing teal drake so this is session five, and in today's video, we're gonna focus on detailing the head. We'll see how far we get. We may get the eyes installed as well. And then in session six, we'll probably work on detailing the body before we get to assembling everything together. And uh, I do wanna make one quick modification to the head carving that we did before. It never hurts to check your reference as you go. I've been doing this 35 years and I still miss things. Uh, nobody has it knocked, so there's nothing wrong with going back, checking your reference, and I'll show you what I'm talking about as we move into the detailing of the head. So let's get going. Thanks for coming back. So let me first show you a slight modification that I want to make on the head that we carved before. This is the front view of the head. You can see the crown is round, but if you look at these reference pictures, very characteristic of a Drake green wing teal to have this almost triangular shaped head from the front. You can see how narrow it gets at the top. Very little eye channel, uh, nice puffy cheeks. So I'm gonna go back and take a little more wood off of the crown of this uh, green wing teal drake to make it more accurate and I'll be happier with the result if we get that done first and then we'll move to detailing the head. Okay I'm going to use my three quarter inch fine saber tooth burr three quarter inch bullet nose or round nose and begin to take material off the side of the crown like we talked about. And I've got my center line on there. We want to keep that intact, but kind of angle this from the eye position upward and narrow the crown to make it more accurate. I'm going to speed things up with the video just as I work on this process back and forth. And we don't want that to be a sharp point on the top of the head, but definitely that triangular shape is what we're looking for. So it's getting closer. I'm just gonna keep working that down and, until I get it the way I want it. That looks a lot closer to where I wanna be and now I wanna to shift to a sanding drum so I don't take too much wood off. I'm just gonna speed through this part I'm using the sanding drum to remove grinding marks and just take it down to that final shape that we want without changing the profile of the head. All right, I'm a lot happier with that uh, crown profile than what we had before. All right, I wanted to come back and compare that and you can see the crown is narrower and a little pointed on top, still round, but much more accurate. And I wanted to include this in the video rather than just doing that without mentioning it, because I think it's so important to check your reference as you go, especially as you're making new and different birds. Um, it's good that you're gonna catch yourself missing anatomy features if you don't refer to uh, reference pictures as you go. So that can be for any part of the decoy, not just the head. Hey, one other mention, uh, I just saw this pencil here. One of my friends, one of my good friends, was kidding me about the quality of my pencils. No eraser, you know, hand sharpened. So I'm thinking about starting a GoFundMe page to to be able to uh, afford good pencils. Anyway, I got a good laugh out of that and I thought I'd share that with you. I 
I do use my carving knife to sharpen my pencils. I should invest in a pencil sharpener. All right, now we want to work on some of the build details. The first thing I like to do is create this little ridge on the side of the bill, on both sides. And we're going to want to put a nail up here. Refer to your reference bill, you know, as far as size goes. And then we're going to have some end of the bill details here. A little thicker. And then I'm going to use my pattern. Hopefully you can see this in the video to locate the nacelle, the, the structure around the, the nostril coming from the corner and then get the size of that overall, transfer that on. The bill symmetry is an area that is tough and a lot of people don't pay enough attention to symmetry and it's real easy to get nostrils at different levels on different sides. So investing some time in, in sketching and planning and taking some measurements is helpful to make sure that doesn't happen. Now I'm going to use the uh, triangular shaped or pyramid shaped ruby bit and uh, just like we did on the Drake Mallard video, uh, if you haven't seen that, I go in and relieve a little material along that line and then blend that out as you go up the bill. And what we're doing here is creating a little bit of a ridge along the edge of the upper mandible uh, to give it that specific feature. I am going to have to grind off my uh, layout work on the nostrils. So I didn't think about that as I was filming. So we'll relay those out. But right now I need to take that area of the bill down and narrow it somewhat. So we'll come back to the nostrils and lay those out again um, after I've shaped the bill the way I want it. I'm going to speed up the video here as I continue to work on that and create those ridges on either side of the upper mandible and also narrow the upper part of the bill a little bit uh, so that those nostrils will be in the right position when we go to carve them in. After that initial shaping then, I want to smooth things back out, remove the grinding marks. I'm using a little 120 grit sandpaper just to do that. Before we put any additional carving features on the bill, we need to smooth things back out. Now I'm going to move to a very small cylindrical ruby bit and begin carving in the nail details. So I'm following my guidelines and creating the initial shape by just carving a groove around the nail. And then I'll go back and round the material in both directions. And I'm also carving that build detail in the front of the bill on either side. So you start with a groove in the proper position and then once you have those grooves set in the proper location you can kind of blend uh, on the upper side of the bill to take wood off there and further define those features and then I'll be flipping the bill around back and forth, basically to get a good angle on continuing to shape those features. 
So I'll speed the video up here and we, we can just kind of watch that happen. This takes some time and you don't have a lot of material to work with on the bill of a, a green wing teal. So you need to be careful you don't take too much off too fast. So I just go at it slow and kind of build up the features going back and forth as you see in the video. One thing I use as a little tool is 220 grit sandpaper and just fold that like this to create a, an edge. And that edge is really handy to get down into these grooves and to finish sand areas of the bill. And as that edge kind of wears, you can refold the sandpaper in a different location. And it really is a helpful tool to go ahead and finish, blend these ridges in and areas around the nail. And uh, you don't need a special tool, but the sandpaper is rigid enough that it gives you kind of a nice tool to hang on to and do the finished sanding in some of those tight areas. We created the little ridge along the edge of the upper mandible previously. Now I want to put that little detail crease line on that ridge. And I just use a pencil to strike that line and then use a knife to carefully score that line. And you don't have to go really deep, but this gives your grinding tool a little bit of a guide. Uh, guideline to keep it nice and straight and smooth. Keep your fingers out of the way of the knife, Tom. And then I'm going to use that small cylindrical ruby bit. And you don't have to do much here, but just follow that knife line to create that additional little detail along the upper mandible edge of the bill. I'll give you a better view here of that. You can see that little crease line. And then I'll do the same on the opposite side. And we can speed through that. And now I'll go back to my 220 grit sandpaper, put a fresh crease in it to give me a nice corner and uh, use that to round the edges of those ridges and just clean them up. There we go. Okay, I relayed out my nostril enclosures now I'm going to use that very small cylindrical ruby bit to carefully go and outline those on both sides. And again, I caution, uh, there's not much material here, so you have to work slow and steady. You can see I rest my hand uh, to maintain good control of this because you're working in a very tight area. And one slip of the bit and you might wipe out the entire nostril. So, so I've defined those enclosures now for the nostril hole. Now I wanna to switch to kind of a flame shaped ruby bit so that I can do some shaping around the, that area. give you a view of that bit. And it has a nice shape to begin to go in and, and blend so you don't have a rigid line around that um, nostril enclosure. And I'm using it now to, to round them as well. So I'll speed this up and we can watch the rest of this. 
Now I'm just going back and forth, blending until I'm happy with the, the way things are shaping up here. I'll give you a view of that from the front. Just check the symmetry. Then I'm going to go back to my 220 grit sandpaper and use a corner of that again to really soften and blend around those nostril enclosures. And just clean things up in general so that they're finish sanded. Just give you a look at that from the front and I'm checking for symmetry, make sure it looks like they're properly located. A little more finished sanding and then we're going to move to locating the nostril holes within those enclosures. So I'm going to get my um, dividers out, go back to the pattern, and you can't see it here because of my hand, but I'm basically checking the distance from the top of the bill there to the nostril hole location, I'm making myself a little mark. Doing the same on the opposite side so we get them in the same location. And then getting a reference dimension on the size of the nostril itself. And then I'm going to transfer that to the carving. You can do this, you can eyeball this. Um, and if, if you can do it accurately, that's good. I've just gotten used to using dividers to make sure I've got good symmetry and positioning things. So you don't have to use dividers if, if you want to jump right to the location. I like to use a pencil to pencil in the nostril before I carve them. That gives you a good view of what it's going to look like after they're carved and you can make adjustments uh, before you actually do the carving. Now I'm going to shift to a very small cylindrical ruby bit and Again, get a good hand position because a slip here would be uh, hard to recover from. It's such a tiny nostril opening, you just need good control. So make sure you've got good control of the bit as you push it in. You can see I'm resting my one hand on the other hand and then resting that on the bench itself. And then I like to use a, a pencil to pencil in the nostrils after I do a little bit of sanding to knock off the debris. And by darkening those, you get a good look at what the nostril looks like when it's finished and painted. And it also helps you make sure they're in the proper position and symmetrical. Right now is the time to understand that. It looks like I'm a little short on that side. So this is why I do it. I'm going to go back and lengthen that opening a bit so that it matches up well with the other side. These are tiny little details, but they're important, especially in a competition. Give you a quick look at the finished nostrils, and we're looking good. This is a final touch on the bill. I'm going to take my embossing tool and just emboss a few subtle wrinkles coming off of the nostril. This you're just pressing into the Tupelo, and this is very soft Tupelo, so it doesn't take much to get a little bit of an indication of a wrinkle. And we don't want to overdo this, especially this bill is so small on the green wing teal. We don't need too much. I'm going to do a few coming off the front, kind of in radiating arcs. Again, I'm, I'm not going very deep. I think just 
adds a little touch of realism. Let's try to get a better view with some shadows. And I'll work on those a little bit and not leave any hard edges. So I've got to soften those up a bit, but that gives you a, a feel for it. Now we can work on the eyes. All right, we're ready for eye installation, and I'm going to go to my pattern, go from the, the corner of the bill there to the front of the eye, and transfer that dimension onto my carving on both sides. And then I'm going to use some Tohican eyes. These are hazel, uh, 10 millimeter. And I'm going to use my circle template, as you've seen in other videos, and line that up on the eye. Give myself a guideline. Both sides. Kind of on the center line of the template. Then I'm going to take a second and look at the eyes from the front and see if they look level just with the pencil markings. And they look pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and use my wood gouge. and very carefully open up the eye opening. Make sure you have a firm grip on the head as you're doing this so that there's no injury from a gouge in your hand. And just pop that plug out. Do that on both sides and then we'll put the eyes in. Now I like to check again and just to prove that I make mistakes. I get to show all of my mistakes, but this eye looks a little lower than this eye opening. So I'm going to open this up a little higher and make sure when I set this eye that I go higher in the hole so that I get these eyes level from the front. Very critical. Those of you that have watched before know that sometimes I use plastic wood with acetone and a, an old paintbrush to install the eyes. On this particular decoy, I'm going to use the epoxy sculpt. This is a water-based two-part epoxy. Um, it has a little longer working time, and I like the water-based nature of it. So we'll go with that on this decoy. You just get equal parts of the two-part system and just do a good job of kneading it together until the color is totally consistent. You can see that I can still see the two parts. So you don't have to watch me knead the epoxy sculpt, but I'll be back when this is ready for the installation. All right, I've got that epoxy sculpt ready to go, and I'm using water and a little, a little flat paintbrush, and I'm just going to soak the interior and also the surrounding area with water, and that promotes bonding of the epoxy sculpt. And then I'm just going to press enough in there to fill the eye hole Take my eye and make sure I'm kind of centered in the hole and then press. And we want a little downward cant and a little forward cant on the eye when it's in its final position. And I just keep checking that and sometimes it takes a little while to get the eye positioned. 
And if you can't use your fingers, you may want to use a tool to press because the epoxy sculpt is pretty resistant. And I want to make sure I get a deep enough eye set. I'll work on that until I get it the uh, proper depth and then we'll work at blending the epoxy sculpt around the eye. Okay, I think that's the proper depth and now I'm just using my finger and a little water and begin moving the epoxy around and smoothing it and blending it into the surrounding areas. Go back and forth, putting pressure on it. You want to blend it right out to where it's thin and you won't have to do much sanding at all. You can use a rubber glove to do this. I'm just using my bare finger. That may not be the best practice overall, but that's what I'm doing right now. Now that I have that pretty well blended, I'm going to use some water and a stiff old scrubber that I retired from the paint shop. And it becomes a nice tool to open things back up and begin to kind of sculpt the eye opening and remove epoxy sculpt where we don't need it. And then We'll go back with my finger again. So this is an iterative process. You go back and forth working on that eye opening until it looks the way you want it. I'm using the, the bigger brush to kind of clean things up. I also have some dental tools that my dentist was kind enough to pass along to me after he retired them and it is nice for this purpose you can kind of remove material like that and then re-blend so you get the idea on the eye set I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of me moving this material around but you really need to work it back and forth until you get an eye opening that conveys life you want the pupil kind of centered in the opening and if it's not looking right that's one beauty of the epoxy sculpt you can dig the eye out start again so I'll work on both of these and then come back and show you when I'm done some key things about eye position. All right, I've got the eyes pretty well centered. I know they're in the right position because we check that from the front. It's always hard to get a view on camera, but I'm happy with how they look. And now we'll set that aside, let it dry while we're work on detailing the body. All right, we'll call that a wrap for today. We've uh, detailed the head, and this is always a fun part for me when you've kind of done the rough work and you can start to see life coming out of the decoy. In the next session, we'll work on the body and uh, make some decisions about how much speculum is gonna be on this particular decoy before we then put it all together with the keel and finish up the project. So this is Tom Christie. Thanks again for the comments, the suggestions. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.